So, verses 1 and 2. Does anybody have any other takes on what would be the key verse or verses of Psalm chapter 134? For me, I simply went with just verse 1. And the reason being, verse 2 kind of reiterates verse 1. So, I broke it down to simply just that verse. Because in verse 2, we're talking about praising God, which it says to do in verse 1. So when we look at Psalm 134, it's all about blessing the name of the Lord. Now if we break it down a little bit farther, what would be a key phrase or phrases for this psalm? That's what I got, brother. Bless the Lord. Or bless you, the Lord. Does anybody else have anything else they want to add to this? If not, then we'll go down to the very last pinnacle and break it down one last time. What are some key words or words that would describe Psalm 134? Bless. Bless. Sanctuary. Sanctuary. Maybe the word Lord itself, because we're blessing the Lord. The whole passage is about praising God, blessing Him. And then I would throw out the word service, yet because we're dealing with whose blessing? We're dealing with the blessing of God in this passage, and we're dealing with His servants. Now when we look at Psalm 134, it does not appear that it was quoted anywhere in the New Testament. Testament. So, what is the history of Psalm 134? When we look at Psalm 134, once again, is there a lot to go on? Is there anything we can pull out? There was one psalm we read about David writing about uh, longing for the Ark of the Covenant, from being joyous over it, how he longed for it while he was in Bethlehem, still as a child. Is there anything that might pop out at us at 1 Psalm 34? It's not obvious. It really isn't. And there's not much to go on. And we'll go back. If we go back to verse 1, that's really the only clue to what might be the history of Psalm 134. We know the purpose of the songs of ascent. They are to be sung as the Jews were going to the temple to worship, to make their, uh, to celebrate the festivals, and, or, to, they were also sung as they went into the temple. The only clue we have to when this might have been written or sung I should say, is in verse, I keep looking at verse uh, 1, uh, Psalm 135, in verse 1, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. It is believed that this psalm was sung by the Jews before their departure back to wherever they came. When we go through the Psalms of Ascent, they were sung as they traveled there. But now we have them finishing up their journey. They're finishing up their pilgrimage. And it, those that some stand by night is an indication that maybe this was sung during an evening service. The Jews were all gathered in the temple. They were having their um, festival. And now they're having an evening service at night. There's really only one festival that has an evening service when it comes to the Jews and their festival. And that is the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles. Who can tell me what the Feast of Tabernacles was? Why did the Jews celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles? What was it for? What was it to remind them about? What's 
that? Yes, it was about Egypt. It was about the departure from Egypt, but it was a little bit more than that as well. What happened after they came out of Egypt?
It's not because of who we are. It's simply because that's what God says in his word, and those are the promises of God. Absolutely, brother. So if we start really diving into Psalm 134, what is the first thing that pops out at us, or should pop out at us? Is the same thing that should have popped out at us with the last passage we talked about last week. What's the first thing that just catches your eye? Behold. So when you looked at Psalm 133 last week, and behold is that word that is meant to grab our attention. Pay attention to this. This needs to catch your eye. Or gaze your eye towards this. It's something that you need to see. It is not like anything else. It is imperative. It is important. And he goes on to say, Bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord. Notice that he says, Behold, pay attention. This is what you need to do. If you are God's, it says, ye servants of the Lord, not ye servants of iniquity, not ye servants of the devil, not ye workers of iniquity, but ye servants of the Lord. If you are God's, you need to bless his name. Praise him. Bless him. And then it goes on to talk by, about which by night stand in the house of the Lord. <clears throat> Once again, this is coming back to the festival where the priests were ministering by night. How does the Bible describe the saints of God? We are kings and priests. We are to minister before the Lord. How do we minister before the Lord? How do we praise Him? How do we bless him? I can think of one woman in the New Testament period of time that we are given instruction, or I should say a statement, on how she praised God or worshipped God. Anna was constantly in the temple praising and worshipping God <laughs> through her prayer and her fasting. How do we worship God? Do we bless his holy name on a regular basis? Do we do it every day and every night? Paul said to pray without ceasing. We are to continually be thinking about the things of God, constantly have our mind on God. It was Charles Spurgeon who said that he cannot really remember 15 minutes of his life where he did not go without, or a span of 15 minutes where he did not go without thinking about Jesus Christ. What is that? That is a sign of a man who has gone to the point of submission and dedication to God. A man who says, you know what? I am going to bless the Lord with all my soul and all that is within me. I will serve him any way I can. And take notice that the word Lord is in all caps. He's not just serving Lord Elohim, creator. But that God that was everything that he ever needed him to be, that's who he's serving. He wants to bless and praise God on every level possible. And he will do it at any time of the day. The Bible then goes on to say in verse 2, Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. So when you bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, are you his this morning? Do you know who you're serving? Are you truly 100% God's? And you can say without a shadow of doubt that when the rapture happens, if it would happen right now, I know where I'm going. And I'm going to be in that great meeting in the sky. And therefore, I can lift my hands in worship, in praise. The Bible says in verse 2, Ye that stand in the house. Nope. That's, you guys are going to know Psalm 135, and I'm going to know that better than Psalm 134 today. But lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Who can lift up 
their hands in the sanctuary. What is the sanctuary? The sanctuary for us is that place where we come to meet God. The sanctuary for the Jews was that place where they came to meet God. And we, they came to lift up their hands. What kind of hands were they lifting up? Holy hands. There's only one kind of hands that can praise God in perfect peace. There's only one kind of hand that can praise God that God can really accept. Yes, God is worthy of all praise. Yes, there's coming a day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that He is Lord. But when we come into the presence of God, there is only one type of hands that can praise Him, and those are holy hands. What does Psalm chapter 24, verses 3 and 4 state? Psalm 24, 3 and 4. Psalm 24, 3 and 4. God, okay, I don't want that in my life. If that keeps you 
me from you, I don't want it in my life anymore. I'll get rid of it. And there's that constant, continual inspection. Because that's exactly what happened with Isaiah, the man of God. He said, whoa, 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 for six chapters to Israel. You can't do this. Was Isaiah good? Was he pure? Was he clean? Was he the man of God? He was. But when he said, Lord, check me, when he got into the presence of God, he realized that he wasn't perfect. And you know what, Lord? Then you cleanse me. You take it away. The service of God will constantly be saying, Lord, change me. Change me. Purify me. Because I want to stand on that holy hill and I want to be pure in your sight. And then we get to verse 3. The Lord that made heaven and earth bless thee out of Zion. If we would stop right here, and we would just stop and think and start right. How long would that list be of all the things that God has blessed us with? You know, there are people that will try to serve God, but they want monetary gain out of it. There are people that will try to serve God, but they want to be known amongst everybody else. They have to be the top leader. They have to be known for this and that. But the person who is truly serving God, we can sit down and realize that God doesn't bless us with just monetary gain. Yes, God does give us finances sometimes. He, sometimes He does give us more than we need. But He blesses us every single day of our life. And if we were to make a list, we could probably start with the fact that we are able to walk, we were able to get up this morning. We're not bedridden. We're not stuck there. We're not stuck on life support. We're not tied to a tube. We're not in the hospital. We're not sick with this. We're not sick with that. God gave us another day. And then we start backtracking. We get to think about, God was here with me here. He blessed me here. I was going through a rough patch, but God was there with me. I was fearful. And he gave me peace. I didn't know what was going on at a time that was nothing but confusion. God gave me clarity of mind. And the list could go on and on and on. I'm thinking of S.M. Lockridge in his sermon, Amen. He was talking about thinking about the blessings that God gave him. And if you're having trouble praying, he said, you start thinking about the blessings of God. And he always started going from, um, woe is me, basically, and to your shouting on shouting ground on Hallelujah Avenue. When you start thinking about the blessings of God, it changes everything. And God has been so good to all of us. I'm sure we all have food in our kitchen cabinet. If we wanted to go home and grab a snack or something, there's something for us to eat. Whether it's just a piece of bread or something. We have stuff in our cabinet. There are people that have nothing. We have a roof over our head. We have a church body that prays with each other. We have a place where we can come and worship God in freedom and sincerity without the government coming in and persecuting us. Without fear, we can walk down the street and not have fearful that someone's going to really come and try to take our life, that someone's going to try and pickpocket us. We can have, think about all the blessings that God's given us. Maybe our bills have been paid for this month. We have relief, heating, we have electric, this and this. We have this, we have that. We have a Bible. There are people throughout the world that don't have a Bible. And we, the list goes on and on and on. And we start thinking about the blessings of God. The only reason we are such a blessed people is because we are the servants of the Most High God. Because God blesses and takes care of His children. It's not a matter of who we are in the flesh. It's not a matter of who we were once a sinner far from God. It's a matter of who we are now. If we have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we are children of the Most High God. And we have an inheritance. And the closer we get with God, the bigger we become spiritually. Smith Wigglesworth said this. He said, I'm little on the out, maybe little on the outside, but I'm big on the inside. What did that mean? It meant he knew who he was with God. He was a servant of the Most High God. And he knew who he wasn't with God. And because of that, 
with his breath, with his actions, he could praise the Most High God with holy hands and a holy heart. As Sister Beth comes to the piano, I'm going to have her lead us. You still up for that? I'll turn your mic on. She's got to lead us in a few songs a few times, and then we'll be dismissed. Just close your eyes and think about what has God done for you? How has he blessed you? Oh, 
They made it there in peace and one body. And now they are standing in the temple where there was once fear of robbers and persecution and peril. Now they are standing in the safety and the security of the temple lifting holy hands to God. You know, that is exactly where we are at this very morning. We've come through the week, and the perils of the week are past. The trials of the week are past. The tribulations of the week are past. And it doesn't matter what's coming up in the future. Right now, we are standing in the safety and the security of the holy place of God, where all things past can be pushed away, all things present, um, future can be pushed away, and we can stand here in the present and in the moment, lifting holy hands with our minds focused on God for one reason. He has done great things for us. And it doesn't matter what the future holds, He will continue to do great things for us. As long as we maintain our status as servants of the Most High God and keep our hands clean and our hearts pure. Let's bow our hearts in prayer and worship. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Lord, we thank you that you're God who reigns on high, but there's none like you, Lord. Even right now, we rebuke any attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property, above and below, and no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be in one mindset and one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost may move, making himself visible if he so chooses, Lord. I pray, Lord, that even right now we rebuke any attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels on the four corners of the property above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. And I pray that our hearts and our minds will be plowed, that they be good soil for your word to follow on, that we may remember it throughout the week. But even greater than that, that we would apply it to our lives and our hearts, that we would be transformed even farther into your very image. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. And with the song leader and the musicians, give them a special blessing as they praise you upon the string instruments of the book of course. Knowing the pastor's mind and his lips as he brings forth your word. And I pray that as all will be done, that the Father will be magnified and glorified. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.